Welcome back. We're in the port of La Duquesa, somewhere I've also been coming since I was a child. We were only a couple of miles away from Gibraltar, and we were still not sure about our plans moving forward, to either continue west and cross the Atlantic, or stay on this side of the pond for another year. We are going to, we're going to go do some yoga. Let's do it. Yeah, before the sun goes down, because we don't have that one left now. Hopefully, um, we don't get eaten by mosquitoes. We were able to stay on land with the family for a few days, which was always nice, and made the most of the Wi-Fi and stable ground to be able to practice some yoga. Some vultures up there. Can't quite see them. At this point, we decided that we weren't ready to cross the Atlantic just yet, with COVID and work. Lars was able to have some work opportunities, so we didn't want to pass up on them. It was a weird feeling to pump the brakes after building a lot of momentum, but at the same time, it felt like a big weight off our shoulders, and we were excited to take things more slowly. Just above that wall over there, you can see Morocco. The outline of it. We're so close. Oh, we have just left the flat and we're about to go for a shop. Go for a shop. It's, it's about it's to rain. rain coming. There definitely whatever, is. Whatever, whatever. We get like, we get like. Okay, do you want to sneak through the golf course? Yeah, understand. Oh, it's cool. I like cool. Go for it. Yes. Uh, so now act golfer. like you're going to play golf. We look. Like golfers. Like golfers. Four. Look at that rain cloud behind us, so that's what we're escaping. Uh oh, I can feel the rain yeah, coming. This is not good. This was so stupid. I don't think. Uh... Get under this tree. <laughs> Should we just get to the shop? We can't, it's miles away. Oh my gosh, there's a storm. <laughs> How did this happen? My camera lens got wet. So this is what we're up against. So we've given up on going to the shop. Gonna leg it home. I think it's a terrible idea. I'm just getting cold and wet. I think we should just make a run for it. Okay, go! Have to get a run up for that one oh no go. way, I'm going on the grass. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh god, it's a bit muddy here. Wow. Okay. It's an actual river. We're on the home stretch now. <laughs> we made it. The power's gone out again, and we're about to order pizza. Well, we've only got an electric hob and an electric oven, so it's a good excuse to order pizza. <laughs> oh. oh, we're still gonna order pizza. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Made it. Yeah, honestly. So I think this will be the first time we've ever um, sailed back on ourselves on this trip so far, heading back east to Almeri Mar. Kind of a weird feeling, kind of comforting. Settling in for winter on board, but that's fine too. It's our home, right? This is inevitably gonna happen at some point, so we don't get too cold on the sail. We've got 120 miles to get to Almeri Mar. I was hoping there was gonna be a bit more wind. Well, we'll see what it's like when we get out there. Hopefully we can just put the sails up and do five knots the whole way and then we'll get there before dark tomorrow. Hey buddy. 
Oh, it's huge. cold. This is my it? finger. For finger for scale. <laughs> I think he's seasick. <laughs> Get some ginger tea or something. So that's Gibraltar and that's Morocco in the background. It is cold. But, and rolly. Yeah, a bit rolly as well, but um just had a ginger tea and what time is it? Cold up to six. Coming up to six o'clock. So we've only been going for three hours. Yeah, not even. Only twenty one hours to go. Lars is currently making me this for dinner. Very ambitious, but delicious. We were loving the sail back. We'd have to wait almost three weeks for the wind to shift and be in our favor to sail back to our Marymar. And we were glad we waited. We were flying, averaging over six knots and enjoying being back on the water. Hmm. Our engine just died. If it was the the uh, diesel bug, it doesn't sound good. The diesel bug yeah. in the fuel filter. Yeah, it's gone through. Now it's going into the. Down into the engine. Difficult thing to fix underway. We yeah. can't sail into the marina, can we? Well, we'll have to ask for a tow in. This route of diesel is not good. Can we check? We'll check the log book. I mean, we haven't filled up in a long time, though. I don't think it's that. I think it's the uh, diesel bug. I don't know. If it is that, then I'm going to kick myself because. If it's the diesel? Yeah, well, if it's either, to be honest, it's kind of our fault. Yeah. What do we do? Well, let's finish this and then I'll get some food in us. And then make a plan. Okay. At least we're still bobbing our way there slowly, right? Yeah. The wind's just come back, thank God. Um, it's not a huge amount, but we're really trying to trim the sails so that we can just milk every bit of it. And we're now about three and a half, between three and a half and four and a half. Only 12 miles left to go. said well we don't let people sail into mm, the marina mm. but their 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 zodiac that they would do it yeah, with easily the one that we saw them doing mm -hmm. it with last time is out of the water for mm. maintenance i'm thinking to take it apart now try to replace the yeah. filters on it and then at least get the engine running enough to get into the marina mm -hmm. we can look at it after we've still got another two hours or so and it's quite stable now it's yeah it's, i it's mean as much horrible, as it's going to be on anchor is the same thing though the swell's yeah, pretty I strong know, exactly so maybe 
Let's do that. Okay. Yay. Okay. Spare secondary, spare primary. Captain is Womitando. <laughs> so Lars isn't doing so well. The thing, the smell of diesel plus the rolling has just been, yeah, a bit much. So he's. <laughs> Okay, yeah, so change the fuel filters, which is horrible, and I get really seasick <laughs> from all the diesel fumes. Um, and then coming to prime the the system again, it wasn't priming, which made me think that maybe we've just run out of diesel. And then we looked back in the logbook and worked it out, and yeah, well, we think that we've uh, just run out of fuel, basically. Yeah, we don't have a, uh, a, a fuel gauge, do we? No. No, there's no fuel gauge on the tank, so you just sort of have to go off the engine hours and what you think it consumes. Yeah. It's funny because last time I was really like nervous about running out of fuel. You remember when we were in Sardinia? Yeah, it's true. I was so nervous about it. I was like, I don't know how much fuel in there is exactly, uh, how much fuel is exactly is in there. And so we just topped up and we topped up only at like half a tank. So I was like, oh, I massively overestimated how much we use or whatever. And now we've run out. <laughs> But I'm actually kind of glad because what it means is that it's probably not um, a really bad fuel contamination. So classic, right? As we come into anchor, the wind picks up and now we're doing like seven and a half knots again. <laughs> and we've got no engine to anchor, so we're gonna have to anchor on the sail. So yeah, we're just getting ready for that. Everyone's gonna think we're absolutely mad for anchoring in an exposed anchorage with swell this big. So this is why you practice anchoring under sail. Because sometimes you have to, when you're an idiot, don't fill up your diesel tank. <laughs> this is wild! So much wind. Our wind indicator is broken, so we don't actually know how much there is, but it's too much to anchor like this. I just, I'm worried about the dinghy ride back. I'm not even sure if our dinghy will manage. That was huge. And I hope the anchor's holding as well. Nice one, Lars. How are we gonna do this? That's where the we're not far away at all, but the way back is going to be, I mean, you're going to get absolutely soaked. Yeah. Which isn't the worst, but will you even make it back? Looks like it could topple the dinghy even. Just keep an eye on anchor watch. We just asked this guy here who's with the sailing school to get us a, he's getting a jerry can full for us. What a hero, right? Things got a bit hairy there fast. Ooh. Well, the plan, the plan to get in the dinghy was where it all goes wrong because it's, it's just it's just too crazy out here to get in the dinghy. Yeah. I mean, what would we have done if that guy hadn't been here? Uh, had to either wait or sail somewhere else or call the marina and ask them to come with someone out or call a friend here and ask them yeah. to come out. After what felt like a really long wait, the sailing instructor pulled through and came back with 10 litres of diesel for us. Lars just had to bleed the system again and we lifted anchor as fast as we could and made our way to port.
made it into the... So we got the anchor up. That oh was my horrible. god, that was so stressful. It was insane. And now we're coming into the marina now. Even this is bad. <laughs> it's not, but just take your time. They're there to help as well. I think that was pretty intense. I mean, I think that was one of the most stressful experiences of our sailing sailing careers. Mm -hmm. There were so many things that had to go right for us to uh, for, for us to pull that off. And I'm glad that guy, that dinghy sailor guy was there. I don't know what we would have done without him. Let's go in anyway, let's go on land. Let's get off this boat. <laughs> it's been too long. This is pretty much the last sail we'll have <laughs> Good for the winter. I'm I know. Happy with that. <laughs> now we want a break. Yeah. We've gone for a celebratory drink. That's much needed. Cheers. We survived. But that was pretty hairy, huh? That was super hairy. But wait, before we get into that, you get a free tapas with every drink that you get. Yeah, like actual free tapas. This beer is, what, two euros? And then, boom, free tapas. And they're huge. It's like a whole meal. Yeah, that was, that was really hairy. Like, there were so many things that just could have gone wrong. Yeah. Right? Yeah, there was a few moments where it's like, okay, if that doesn't work, like if the anchor were to drag, it would have been difficult to sail off because we had no engine to bring the yeah. anchor up. Yeah. So we would have had to leave the chain there. I was thinking to like tie a fender to it or something and leave the chain there. That could have worked. And then we could have sailed off. And then sail off where, you know? Well, that's I, the thing. Yeah, I think it's like... what caught me off guard was that I, when the engine went, I fully expected them to be able to tow us into our spot. Yeah. And then when they said, oh, no, we can't do that, sorry, go somewhere else. I was like, oh, damn, okay, now we got to get this engine started. Yeah. Like a, a couple of people came up to us um, as soon as we uh, had tied up. And like, oh, wow, we saw you out there. It looked pretty hairy. Like, uh, is the boat okay? I said, yeah, the boat was fine. And the anchor held? Yeah, the anchor held. It's like, oh, oh good boat, good boat. <laughs> Yes, now we can. She, she did well. She did well. Uh, nothing, nothing broke. We're a bit frazzled and, you know, recuperating with a little beer. We were really glad to get in and be safe in the marina. It was a good reminder of how quickly things can escalate. We went from motoring with no wind to being on anchor without power on a lee shore in over 30 knots of wind. Thanks for watching and subscribe if you'd like to support us making these videos.